Seriously, check this out. I've never seen this technology before in my life. This seems amazing. Okay, so that hammer is real, right? That's not a projection. You see? I'm gonna get my hand sliced off of it. I've never seen a television that's transparent before. That was not a projection. Impressed yet? All I can think is perhaps the way LED technology works is, which is LCD, liquid crystal display, I'm not sure. At any rate, there's no backlighting here, which is what a television's thickness might consist of. So what they've done instead is just, is just brightly lit this back white wall here, just with these side lights. And the rest of it is simply a non-lit uh, grid. High definition right? of unlit color pixels that are separated with no backlighting. The way I understood these things work is that little barn doors open on different angles and refract light at certain angles. But I'm completely confused about this. I don't really know what's going on. You see, even there. Whatever it is, that could work on a mirror. You know what I'm saying? You could look at the back of your own head on the mirror in front of you with just a single camera integrated into a very thin plastic layover on the mirror and with touchscreen incorporated. Unbelievable. So this is day 11 of wearing the poly hairpiece, and I've shown you earlier how I've chopped out some of the poly at the front hairline that was starting to become exposed as the V-loops released themselves. And over here, I'm not sure if you can see how clear that is to see, but from my perspective, it's fairly clear. There's a line, but then doing that makes it disappear basically, in this lighting anyway. In sunlight, I think it would be shiny and reflective and you wouldn't want to do it. Now I have that uh, shine killer stuff here. We still don't want to walk around with exposed poly here. And, you know, a lot of people might think, well, at least it looks like it's graduated now. But... It's just too worrying to know that it's, it's, it's peeling back up there like that. And it's not like I'm just being forceful with it. Perhaps the reason they say poly only lasts for two or three weeks is because of this problem. Not because the poly degrades at all or it's hard to peel off because I've shown you how it is actually quite easy to peel off. Easier even probably than lace. Probably less stretchy than lace if anything if, you, if you've got a good grip on it and it's and your forehead's heated up. So I'd say, I, I would like, before I go back to class, to replace this piece with a new one. And the new, the next class will start on Monday, so I'll have to do this by Sunday, replace this with another piece. And I've, uh, 
I've stocked up on more peroxide. And the other, the other problem is up here. Um, now I'm aware, I'm aware that I'm, I'm receding here and I really should start making my hair pieces bigger. But in order to do that, I'll need a few hundred extra dollars to buy more larger poly pieces and start realizing that my pieces are gonna be longer from now on. Now from my perspective, is just talking specifically about my own hair, um, I wouldn't want to start doing that kind of thing before I'd set up a, a 45 degree mirror here. Now I'll be looking into how to build that. And I think the only realistic way to get this done without totally altering my bathroom setup in a way that would actually be helpful to you as well to achieve it is to probably just wear some sort of backpack so that you can just twizzle this thing around behind your head because everything else will make a lot of mess in your bathroom like if you have a tripod then your ankles are too far to it and the whole thing is liable to fall over otherwise you can have a ladder that does that over the top and then you can hang lights and all this sort of stuff like a truss over the top in front of your bathroom mirror but you might not have the space for that kind of thing so it'd be unhelpful for me to do something one way and, and you wouldn't be able to do it yourself so it'd be more useful for me to to rig up something that would just be something i wear with a mirror with a built-in led that i could just angle around <coughs> nicely Obviously I wouldn't be using a mirror that big anyway, I'd be using a mirror maybe that big. So it's practical, with LEDs built into it, so I can see the back. Now if I'm lazy, I'll just continue to wear my hair forward. But then I've got that risk up here, of that part showing. And that's not something I can actually even remedy without a mirror already right now. So um, even even if I don't make the longer hair piece so to extend back to here, I'd still probably have to start getting a, a second mirror just to deal with this accuracy of the poly back here. In fact, I should have had one from day one, even with the lace. But if you've got uh, if you've got to glue and attach things back here, I have no idea how you've been doing it. Please let me know in the comments below how you've done it. Have you got a second mirror? Are you using a hand mirror? If you're not using a hand mirror, then I don't know how you're doing it. And if you are using a hand mirror, I can't imagine how the delicacy of this, using glue like that, would be achieved. Maybe you're using tape, so that you've pre-taped the lace or the poly, and then you're able to just feel it somehow like that, blindly feel the space. But that uh, screen I just showed you is pretty fucking amazing, isn't it? Now, I've been looking into mirror technology for a while, thinking that there's a lot of money to be made from revolution, revolutionising the mirror industry using technology. There, the mirrors are going to change in the next 10 years, there's no doubt about it. I'm just going to get into it. Analyse your fat content, the clothing you wear, allow you to see what you're going to be wearing uh, from online shops before you press purchase. All sorts of things, so I really gotta get on top of that. Um, these two little hairs here, I'm pulling that out. So basically, I just pulled out basically six hairs just from that because there were three hairs and they go like that, so that's six. So every time I do that, more and more hairs are coming out the front, probably throughout the middle of it, which is probably good that I, so that's probably good that I had a medium density hairpiece, even though I think it was advertised as being uh, medium light density. But I think you'll agree that this density suits my hair, and if you've had a look at medium light density in the past, you'll think, okay, well that's good because it looks graduated with the front hairline. But since we've kind of conquered that a little bit by doing the bleaching at the front, and I'm assuming that if you have uh, lace at the 
front that is not using clothing dye. Because if you're using clothing dye, I don't know what bleach you would use to remove that and how uh, accurate you can get, get it. But if you're just using, hopefully they're using hair dye, so you can use peroxide that you can buy at the supermarket. And in that situation, you can really get that down. But if you did this with a poly hair, with a, with a lace hair system, where all your dark knots are showing through, it's still gonna look bad. People might still notice that even if your front hairline for the first centimetre depth in is nice to look at. I just think the pros of poly still outweigh the pros of lace. And I think there are less cons with poly than lace. But this has all been during winter, so I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen when summer comes. Lace was a problem, and somebody said, well, now you've found this killer shine, why don't you go back to using lace, which would nicely bleach knots. Well, the first thing is, it's hard to get bleach knots. A company's going to tell you they bleach their knots, and then you're going to have a whole back and forward sending of stuff. Secondly, it's hard to just apply glue to the piece and then slap it on your head, and that's the end of it. And the whole hold of it, like, the hold of the poly is... 10 times better than the hold of lace at the front hairline. After every shower with lace, I used to get out of the shower and just pick away at the front that was, you know, it had bubbled out or something with the glue and I was picking away at it. With this, I have a shower, I dry my head, style my hair and then I'm out of there, just like somebody with a full head of hair. With lace, I couldn't behave that way. Um, the V-lips in the poly, in terms of their wall or barricade of hair that was appearing at the front was overcome by the peroxide. And so now the only remaining problem really is the shedding of the V-loops at the front. Even though I prefer there weren't V-loops, I don't think V-loops are really a very a beautiful look. Uh, but they could overcome that in the factory if they bleached the middle. Like so all the way through they were blonded right down at the roots for every hairpiece, always. But they don't do that. So at least I've got the front hairline managed in that way. And the other thing about the lips is they just don't stay in. They're not, they're not held on tight by whatever this process is that they're using. And I think they could probably just remedy that in the factory. So potentially V lips could be the answer if those things held on tighter and if they had them bleached the base because no one would ever really know. Uh, even with these problems, I'd say the problems with lace are more than the problems with poly. And like I say, with the, with the glue, like Walker Ultra Hold, for example, the only glue that works with lace, um, it, it melts at 25 degrees. So it doesn't matter how much of this stuff you put on it, the shine is not just shine anymore. It's exposed and melted glue that's exposed. So the whole thing wants to come off and Anytime you press down on your hair, it goes straight in. Whereas I can wear a helmet with this, right? I can wear a hat, helmet, doesn't matter. No, no glue is going to seep out or be visible at any point throughout here. If there's any glue showing across the front hair line, which it rarely does, really. Um, then it's just a quick fix, problem solved. Any glue that's melted underneath because it's over 25 degrees Celsius will not be visible to anybody at all. So for those reasons, I'm going to stick with poly. Um, the problem with poly around the perimeter here is that it, it has to be so exact, otherwise you, got, you start seeing gaps and things, right? Which still happens with lace to a degree, but with lace you can just shed it in and it can overhang a little bit and be a bit like that and you won't notice, there's no plastic that you would have noticed. Unless you were looking up close. Whereas this, you could probably see from a further distance away that this guy's got some white kind of plastic strip going on in his hair. That's why, or her hair. That's why you've got to really be accurate with the poly. So for, for my changes in the future, firstly, I'll be more careful when brushing 
my poly hair piece. And if you have a shorter hairstyle, I imagine that it won't be as much of a problem for getting caught on hair brushes and running your fingers through your hair or the weight of the water in a shower or something, pulling those V loops out. I think it's because I've got fairly long hair, just down to the eyebrows on the front fringe. Um, the other thing I'll be doing is, I'm not sure, it won't be my very next piece, it'll be in a few pieces from now, once I've got a mirror set up, I'll cut it probably almost so that I get two pieces out of a, out of a poly hair piece, but, you know, a stock piece. I'll be able to cut two stencils because I'll enlarge my stencil, which is currently about like that, and I'll extend it to be about like that. So that, that whole thing will fit over there like that. And I'll do it to the extent that I have two. And I'll shave my head accordingly to the stencil instead of the other way around because I want to maximise my economy there. But I think that will be enough that my hair will start from after the, the crown turn has turned from going up to forwards. And I think that's a, a fine place to begin a hair piece from there. I don't know what, what will happen with all of this and I'll have no real way to view what's going on back there at any point unless I come home each time and have that special mirror which is another reason that a backpack 45 degree mirror system might be better and a good thing about it if, if this backpack mirror is directional with LEDs there and so on and you're at a place where there's no mirror that's well lit in front of you we can assume you'll go to a place where there is a mirror or we'll slot out a second mirror with maybe suction cups put on the wall and that already has LEDs built into it. So you've got a double mirror system just waiting to go. Just as long as you've got a wall, I think. That would be fair to ask you to have a wall. Otherwise you could do it like that, but then, and so you can see that and angle this front mirror exactly with, in conjunction with the back mirror, but you need your hands to deal with all of this stuff, right? So I'm gonna have to build a backpack mirror system and if I do it well, then I'll maybe market it so that other people can buy it without any kind of hairdressing issues. Mostly people, I assume, who uh, are dealing with hair pieces. Um, I can't see any, much of more of a market than that, unless somebody's got an injury on their head it's for medical purposes, so they can dress wounds and stuff, I don't know. So, yeah, be more delicate with the hairs falling out of the poly, extend the poly hairpiece, and have a proper mirror system with LEDs built into it. And make sure that the LEDs can magnet off or whatever they have to do and just suction cup onto a mirror or be built into a mirror that has suction cups onto it or something like that.